Hello everyone, my name is Kyle Miller, Enterprise Solutions Engineer at DJI. And within this playlist, we are talking about all of the different options for DJI Enterprise drones when it comes to mission capture of an asset. And on this video specifically, we are talking about the point of interest orbit mission style with DJI Enterprise drones. So if you are looking to be able to conduct something for telecommunication towers or things that are basically just very narrow structures, very circular structures that are vertical, then this is gonna be the mission plan for you. Diving into the actual agenda here of what we're gonna be talking about, first off talking about what is a point of interest orbit mission? Why would you want to use it in an overview there? Then really diving deep into how to plan a point of interest orbit mission, whether it's in the Pilot2 app, live in the field, or if you're planning it in the Flight Hub 2 web browser and doing that at the edge of the, either at the edge of the field or back at the office and then loading that into the controller and planning the mission. And then we'll have some final thoughts on the conclusion portion. So let's talk about what is a point of interest orbit mission and why you would want to use it. Well, first off, a lot of the assets that we are capturing are oftentimes very complex. It can be a bit daunting for understanding how we're gonna go about capturing these different missions for, or planning these different missions for the very complex geometry that we may have. And what I, the method that I like to do is being able to simplify that asset into very simple geometry. And that can be done with building blocks. So if we were going out and capturing for this example today, we're gonna to be capturing this church. And if we were to simplify what the geometry is of this church, we can really break it down into building blocks where we have the facades of all of the walls around the entire church. They're gonna be very vertical. We also have those nicely high pitched slope roofs, as well as that spire at the very top uh, or very front of the church that we're really going to be focusing on today to be able to capture that point of interest orbit. So if we break it down into simple building blocks, then how can we use the different DJI tools, the different mission types to be able to automate mission and capture the best quality data set possible? What does that look like? Well, first off, we also need to understand what the different mission capture methods with DJI drones are. That can be broken down into three different buckets. First off, we have automated missions, which we have a number of different videos coming out about these automated missions, whether it be an area mapping tool that you may have used historically, or some of the other missions that DJI has created over the past couple of years, such as slope missions or geometric missions that are all gonna be automated that you pre-planned. Then we have live flight tools that are going to be conducted really over the asset in a live real-time way. That's going to be the point of interest orbit that we're talking about today, as well as some other mission types. And then if needed, you can obviously go into manual capture, fly the drone manually, and some other tips, tricks, and tools that you can utilize there. But as a as I mentioned before, we have this flight tool, a point of interest orbit. It also can be, uh, you'll see with the Flight Hub 2 app, you are also utilizing a geometric mission to be able to capture a point of interest orbit if you are planning on a web browser. But let's go ahead and dive into why you'd wanna capture a point of interest orbit. So if we take that church that we saw a few slides ago and we try to simplify the geometry into these building blocks, we have found that there are a couple different ways that we can capture this site. And I will say there isn't just a one way is the best way typically to capture a site. We have two different methods here and there are many other methods that can be used, but ultimately you can see the positives, the negatives for capturing between process one or process two, whether it's less missions needed to plan, needed to load in, or just overall a more efficient mission planning by capturing each side at once. But either way, both of these missions we have found utilizing a point of interest orbit to capture that spire is going to be very beneficial to automate capture of a very circular or narrow structure that's gonna be very vertical. 
So what is a point of interest orbit mission and what is the overview here? Well, point of interest orbits aren't always a pre-programmed flight route, but more rather a tool that can be used live in flight. With how simple and how fast an orbit can be set up, it can make anything that's thin or circular that's very tall, vertical, uh, it can make it very easy to capture very quickly. Point of interest orbits work well with assets such as towers, whether it's a cell tower, a water tower, even grain silos, since I'm based out of the Midwest United States, we have a lot of those, oil tanks, and more. On the other side note, a point of interest orbit that's going to be planned and then loaded into the controller, if you're going to be planning this at a before you go out to the site, it's going to be very similar to a geometric mission, but you're going to set that geometric mission to a cylinder shape. While the geometric mission will 100% automate the capture of a tower, the speed of having to plan that geometric mission is very oftentimes more time needed to plan them compared to just capturing a quick point of interest orbit that you'll see the workflow today. So there's definitely just different positives, negatives for how you plan that point of interest orbit, um, but we found that these are very valuable for live within the live capture. So let's let's dive into what does that look like more specifically with live capture. When we are planning a quick point of interest orbit, we really have four different steps. We're we'll walking through each one of these steps with more detail. But first off, you're going to want to, with step one, set a pinpoint over the asset. So I'm going to fly directly over the asset and gimbal, set the gimbal angle all the way down to a negative 90 degrees. So straight down, looking nadir to the very top of the asset that you're trying to capture. Once you do that, you can set the pinpoint function, which is going to be in the upper left hand corner. And one other tip that I have noted, if you are flying something that's very dangerous, like a flare stack or a cooling tower, where flying directly over the asset may cause actual damage or safety concerns to the drone because it's putting off a lot of heat, such as a flare stack or a cooling tower, you also can utilize some of the zoom capabilities that our drones have, whether it's the Mavic 3 Enterprise and the seven time zoom, or if you're looking at the three time and seven time zoom of the Matrice 4 Enterprise, or even with the larger M400, being able to use the uh, zoom capability if you're us utilizing the H30 series, but you're going to be able to click on the zoom and be able to fly much higher over the asset and then select that drop pin. You can, if your drone is also equipped with it, turn on the laser rangefinder so that you have a more accurate 3D pinpoint location so that it understands within 3D space where the very top of the uh, pinpoint or of that asset that you want to, want to capture. So once you have set the very center of the tower, you're gonna then back off the surface. You're gonna descend till you get to the very top of the tower. So I'm looking right now at the cross and you can see in 3D space all the different pinpoints that I have set. I am then going to press on the orbit tool, which is right below the pinpoint tool. And that's going to bring, it'll turn yellow and it's going to bring up a couple different uh, settings that can be done over the camera feed. So you're going to notice that the arrows will show, will show up in the UI. As you move the drone left or right, it's going to maintain the same distance away from that pinpoint. And you're going to notice that the arrow shows up in yellow. To be able to set a, the drone, kind of a cruise control of orbiting around the tower, you are then going to press the C1 button on the back of the controller. At that point, you basically have a drone that is orbiting around that making that point of interest orbit just around the structure and you could have your hands completely off the sticks and it's going to keep orbiting 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 so really all we have to do then is start capturing that can be done by setting the camera to the time lapse mode and then you can if you want to capture a lot of data set the speed to basically the highest setting that you have or the quickest setting on the drone. Right here I'm flying a Mavic 3 Enterprise so I can set it at 0.7 seconds but if you're flying the Matrice 4 Enterprise you can even set it down to 0.5 seconds so it's capturing every half of a second. 
You're also going to notice the C2 button menu show up. That's going to be locking the gimbal angle. So if you always want to make sure that you're capturing nadir to the tower, I can then adjust the camera angle and you can see the view of what the camera gimbal angle is on the bottom of the screen. Right now we're at negative nine, but once I once I get it to a camera angle that I would like, I can also press the C2 button and then it's gonna lock that gimbal angle. You're also gonna notice on the map view, you have the pinpoint show up on the satellite map and based off of how far away you are from the asset, you're gonna get that green circle so that you can understand where the drone is going to be orbiting around. Like I mentioned before, you're gonna be setting the camera setting to the time-lapse mode and then starting that time-lapse. So at that point, you basically, with the hands off the sticks, you're going to have a drone orbiting around that asset, capturing photos, uh, whatever time interval that you have. So you, within just a few seconds, you flew over it, you set the pinpoint down, you backed off the surface, you set the speed, and then locked in the cruise control speed, and then you set the time lapse, and now you're capturing automatically within just a few seconds. At that point, once you've made an orbit, you can then manually move the altitude stick to descend or ascend if you want to, move up the tower or down, and from there you can just keep capturing orbits. Once the orbit's done, or once you have completed all the orbits that you would need, you can then tap in the upper left-hand corner again on the orbit tool, and that's gonna let you then fly freely again and stop the orbit. So what does this whole workflow look like? Let's go ahead and take a look. So you can see I'm gonna fly directly over the asset. I'm gonna press the button in the upper left-hand corner for dropping a pinpoint. And then from there, my, once my pinpoint is set, I have this orbit tool pop up. I can then tap on the orbit tool and it's going to bring up the arrows there for me and the point of interest orbit is enabled. I'm gonna then take, since I'm flying in mode two, I'm gonna take my right stick and go ahead and take it over to how fast I wanna orbit around the tower. And then I'm gonna press the C1 button and it's going to turn from yellow to green and then green is gonna mean that it is in cruise control. I've already set it to time-lapse mode and it is now capturing photos every 0.7 seconds. So as I complete an orbit, I'm gonna go ahead and drop down and then keep capturing more orbits around this asset. So a very, very quick method of doing it. If you are looking to be able to do a more detailed flight planning, you can obviously do that within Pilot 2 or even the Flight Hub or within Flight Hub 2 or even the Pilot 2 app if you do create a geometric mission and select on the cylinder option. But let's go ahead and dive into, Pi into Flight Hub 2. We have four different steps here for being able to plan those. Let's walk through those four different steps. First off, you're gonna be able to create that new geometric flight plan. You will wanna make a Flight Hub 2 account and then also on the controller within Pilot 2, you're gonna log into Flight Hub 2. That means that whenever you make a mission here, it is then going to, excuse me, then it's going to uh, be able to sync between whatever you build here and whatever you load into the controller. When it's time after you have planned the mission and saved the mission, on the controller, you will go into the flight route tab and make sure that the controller is connected to the internet and you will see that there is a cloud tab at the very top of the controller. From there, you can tap into the cloud, you can see the missions that you've created and then download those directly to the controller for mission execution. So step one, you're gonna create a new geometric flight plan. You're gonna to go to the flight route library and hit on the plus button and then select the geometric route. You'll select what, select what drone that you're using as well as naming the route. We also recommend loading in a 3D model on Flight Hub 2 to flight plan around. It's just gonna help you understand where you're planning in 3D space. And we do also recommend capturing that 3D model with RTK so that you have an accurate 3D model to plan over. Uh, everything on Flight Hub 2 is captured in WGS84, so you'll want to process it within WGS84 to be able to capture a quick 3D model for flight planning over. You could even you could do a 5-axis smart oblique. 
You could even do your own point of interest orbit and then once you have the raw photos, you're going to then either process those locally within Terra and upload that 3D model to Flight Hub 2 or upload the raw photos to Flight Hub 2 and actually process on the cloud with Flight Hub 2 itself. Once you have that 3D model to plan over and you created a new geometric mission for point of interest orbits, you're gonna click in the upper right corner, move it from a polyagonal geometric route to a cylindrical geometric route. Once you have done that, you'll click on the very center of the asset, and then you're gonna notice a circle as you move the mouse get larger or smaller depending on how far away you are from the very center point that you have already set. So you'll be able to set the distance away from that, uh, or basically not the distance away, but the actual size of that asset. And once you click from the very top down view, which is something that I recommend doing for the first two steps, then you're gonna be able to view that 3D model from an oblique angle to be able to set the top and the bottom base so it understands how high and how low on the asset that it's going to capture. So you can see two different screenshots showing what that looks like. Once you have that cylindrical polygon made over the asset, it's as simple as setting the mission parameters where you can adjust the distance to surface, you can adjust side lap, front lap, the speed of the drone, uh, and go back in and also adjust the top and bottom base altitude. You can also set the flight route direction between horizontal and vertical. So horizontal meaning that's gonna just make these orbits around, but you can actually do orbits by going up and scaling up and down the asset, but still be in a cylinder or a circular flight path. And that's, that's basically it with point of interest orbits. It's actually a pretty simple flight plan to be able to do. Some final conclusions would just be, if you're trying to do it very quickly at the field's edge, you don't have a 3D model to plan over. You can either do it one of two ways. You can plan a geometric mission, and tap into the cylinder view and be able to more automate it there. Or if you feel like you're a somewhat experienced pilot and you feel fairly comfortable with the sticks, in my opinion, the fastest way to automate it would be the POI setting where you fly over the asset, drop a pinpoint back off the asset, and then click on the point of interest orbit button and be able to just adjust how fast the drone is orbiting around the asset and setting it to time-lapse mode. It's something that I have found even on cell towers being able to automate capture within maybe even just a minute of pulling up on site. You get connected to RTK, you fly over the asset, you back off the asset and very quickly you're already automating capture. From there you're scaling up and down the asset so it is a little bit more manual than fully planning a geometric mission, but once you get very comfortable, it's something that I highly recommend. And obviously it's gonna take more than just a point of interest orbit to capture the entire asset, depending on what you are capturing. So it is really recommended to break down whatever that complex asset that you're trying to capture into a simplified geometry and method that I like using is breaking it down into building blocks. And whenever you have a building block, that is going to have a basically a cylinder building block type. A point of interest orbit is something that I would highly recommend. If you do have any other questions, feel free to reach out to the DJI Enterprise team, and I hope to see you on another video. Thank you.